Hi guys! So today is going to be a tutorial video. I know it's very disappointing, but I'm working on Halloween costumes, so those tutorials will be up. Today I'm just going to answer a question that I get almost all the time, and it's usually what kind of sewing machine do I have, what kind of sewing machine do I recommend for beginners, and how do you thread a sewing machine? In my apartment, I have three machines. Um, the first one is a Brothers LS. 2125i. It's $79 at Walmart and Target. Um, it's a very inexpensive machine. It has a zigzag stitch, a buttonhole stitch, um, also five different length of stitches. And of course with every sewing machine it has your back tacking as well. Now those are the only thing you would need in a sewing machine. Every tutorial that I've done so far could be done on that machine. What I do recommend doing is going to the fabric store with a piece of fabric and just testing out different machines. It's actually kind of like buying your car. You have to get into a car and test drive it before you buy it. And literally when you're sewing you're stepping on this pedal. So it's just like buying a car. Now if you don't want to have that like bond with your sewing machine and you don't care about it, I do recommend getting the Brothers sewing machine only because it's inexpensive and it does what it's supposed to do. Also keep in mind that when you're buying a sewing machine you have to think about how often you're going to use it, how dedicated you are about sewing. Um, if you're going to be really dedicated and you're going to use it often, I recommend investing in a more expensive machine. The sewing machine that I bought is a Janome sewing machine and it's um, a 2139N model. I actually bought it from a lady who bought the machine thinking that she was so often but it never came around. That sewing machine came in a box with a manual and everything, basically brand spanking new. And I actually got that machine off of Craigslist. So here's another thing about buying sewing machines. Get off of eBay, get off of Craigslist. Recommend Craigslist a little bit more than eBay because you could actually go to their household and try it out. And if you're going to do that, take a friend with you. Another machine I have in my apartment is a Janome Juno Serger. Um, the model is 3434D. It's kind of like I'm talking about a bra size or something. 3434D. Now the Serger, I actually got for I think 80 or 90 dollars and it also was off of Craigslist. The lady was actually generous enough to give me 10 spool of thread and that alone was 20 dollars and I've been surging like crazy. I only use three threads on my surging machine. Um, it does what it needs to do. It basically just finished off the raw edges for me. Now if I had a choice I would probably go for a five thread machine. It's around a thousand dollars. I mean everything has a price right? As far as surges go, if you're gonna do some hardcore sewing or if you're gonna be selling on Etsy, yes do buy a serger because you want to finish off all of your garments. Now if you're not going to be sewing that often, you know, you can always finish off the raw edges using a zigzag stitch or pinking shears or even just hem everything or roll hem everything. You don't need a serger. You don't need to be spending that money on a serger. That's enough chit chatting and talking. Um, here's a run through of how to basically thread a sewing machine. For those of you who already know how to thread a sewing machine, you might think it's so easy. There's no need for me to be making a video on that. That's true, but there's a lot of people out there who don't know how to thread a sewing machine and I realized this when I actually started classes and there are so many people who are like, oh my gosh, what is a bobbin and why is it there? So I'm just being courteous to the beginners as well and I kind of want to have this video to jumpstart my costume videos. So let's go ahead and get to it. First off, let's start off with the Janome sewing machine. It has an adjustment for the different type of stitching, such as a buttonhole, zigzag stitch, and a straight stitch. The second adjustment is for the length of the stitches. On a bunch of the newer machines, there's a plastic covering that can be removed for sewing sleeves. Here's how you will find the bobbin as well. To take out the bobbin case, you'll just pull on the metal tab and the whole thing should pop right out. Use the plastic bobbin to wind up your thread. Thread the bobbin by placing the thread in between the wheel and pulling it outwards. Place the bobbin on the bobbin winder. On the newer machines, you will have to push the bobbin winder to a side, otherwise it wouldn't spin. Hold the end of the thread straight up and step on the pedal and let it wind just a little bit. Snip off the extra thread and wind up the rest of the bobbin. With your thread hanging from the right, place the bobbin right into the bobbin case. Place the thread in between the metal slits and pull it straight to the left. Now your thread should be hanging from the rectangle opening. With the handle pointing up, put the bobbin back into its place. You should hear a snap or a click when you do this. 
Threading a sewing machine is pretty standard on most home sewing machines. Place your thread on the thread spool pin. Bring it to the left and pass it through the first thread guide. Bring the thread downwards between the tension disc and up towards the thread take-up loop. Bring your thread all the way down to the needle thread guide and thread your needle from front to back. To bring the bobbin thread to the bed of the sewing machine, you will have to hold the needle thread all the way to the left. Turn the wheel towards you slowly and this should pick up the bobbin thread. Place both threads to the back and get ready for a test stitch. For test stitching, you should fold your fabric on bias and sew on the fold. Now pull on the thread to see if it would break. If they're not breaking, then that means your tension is okay. Now if one thread snaps, that means the tension is probably too tight. You might have to go back to the tension dial and adjust it. If both threads snaps, that's okay, the tension is fine, but you probably have really stretchy fabric. Here's a quick tip on how to sew a straight line. Find some kind of refrigerator magnet and place it on the seam allowance guide. Align the edge of your fabric to the edge of the magnet and just start sewing. How easy is sewing a straight line now? Threading a serger is a completely different ball game. You definitely need a lot of patience and a pretty good pair of tweezers to thread a serger. All sergers come with a threading guide. Be sure to follow this correctly, otherwise you're going to end up with a tangled mess. I'm going to use only three threads on my machine. The needle thread, the lower looper, and the upper looper will be threaded on this machine. Usually serges come pre-threaded like this. All you have to do is just switch out your thread. To do this, place your thread on the correct spool pin. Tie each new thread to the correct thread on the serger. Wind up the thread a little bit so that it doesn't create any problems with the process. Now step on the pedal and watch the thread pass through each dial. Be sure to keep close attention to the needle thread. As the new thread is getting closer to the needle thread, you'll have to stop and manually thread the needle yourself. After a few practices, threading a serger is pretty easy. Make sure you follow the guide. I hope this answered quite a bit of questions and good luck with your machines!